Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, are one of the primary causes for the ozone depletion, and ozone depletion is primarily addressed by a building's energy use and the types of refrigerants used. This prerequisite aims to reduce ozone depletion by prohibiting the use of chlorofluorocarbon, CFC-based refrigerants, in the HVAC and R systems. If the project is reusing existing HVAC and R systems, then the project team should complete a CFC phase-out conversion before project completion. Equipment that contains less than 0.5 pounds or 225 grams of refrigerant will be exempt. In 1987, the Montreal Protocol was established in order to phase out the use of most harmful ozone-depleting substances, including CFCs. Through the Montreal Protocol, CFC production was phased out before 1995 in the countries that had signed the protocol. Before 2010, CFC production was phased out in most of the other countries. Even so, many CFCs still remain in a large amount of existing products. With the CFC phase-out requirement, this prerequisite aims to support the Montreal Protocol. Even though the CFCs, HCFCs, and halons, which are chemicals used in fire suppression systems, all contribute to ozone depletion, this prerequisite only addresses CFCs. Let's take a closer look at the prerequisite. Prerequisite Intent To Reduce Stratospheric Ozone Depletion Prerequisite Requirements Projects should not use chlorofluorocarbon, CFC-based refrigerants, in HVAC and R systems. When reusing existing HVAC and R equipment, projects should complete a comprehensive CFC phase-out conversion before the project completion. Phase-out plans going beyond the project completion date will be considered on their merits. Existing small HVAC and R or other equipment, such as standard refrigerants or small water cooler units containing less than 0.5 pounds or 225 grams of refrigerant, will be exempt. Only for the special conditions, if all the CFC containing equipment cannot be replaced or retrofitted before the project completion, project teams can develop a narrative stating the reasons preventing the CFC phase-out before the project completion, in addition to a CFC phase-out plan with a schedule. Please note that this exception is only for the special conditions. On the exam, if a question asks the requirements of this prerequisite without mentioning any special conditions, do not consider this option, and choose the answer that restricts any CFC phase-out after the project completion. Continuing with documentation, projects that do not use any equipment containing CFCs should document a confirmation that no new or existing equipment contains CFCs. Projects that need to complete a CFC phase-out should document the equipment type, refrigerant type, CFC conversion or replacement plan, refrigerant leakage rate and quantity, and phase-out completion date. Lastly, Let's take a look at the key things to remember for this prerequisite. 1. On the exam, expect to see several questions relating to refrigerants. 2. With this prerequisite, every LEED BD plus C project should not use any CFC-based refrigerant. 3. When using existing HVAC and R units, comprehensive CFC phase-out conversion should be completed before the project completion. 4. Existing equipment containing less than 0.5 pounds or 225 grams of refrigerant are exempt from lead refrigerant requirements. 5. Montreal Protocol is an international agreement signed in 1987 to phase out the use of most harmful ozone-depleting substances, including the CFCs. By the Montreal Protocol, CFC production was phased out before 1995 in the countries that have signed the protocol. Before 2010, CFC production was phased out in most of the other countries. And 6. Even though halons are not addressed by this prerequisite, 
It's good to know that they're another type of chemical that are used mainly in fire suppression systems, which also cause ozone depletion.